All right, MEGEN 300. Um, today I'm going to be talking about the general outline of the thermistor assignment, which is lab view one. So in this assignment, you're asked to collect data from a thermistor and measure the temperature in the room. Eventually, you're going to have two thermistors in your circuit, and you'll be able to measure two temperatures independently uh, using the DAC and your thermistor circuit. So to set this up in lab view, what I recommend doing is using your DAC VI and setting it up for multiple channels, single samples. So as a reminder, you get this DAC VI by right clicking and you come down the menu to select a VI and then you can navigate to where you have your DAC VIs uh, saved and grab your analog acquisition VI. All right, and place that in the block diagram. We've already got one down here. You can select multiple channels, single sample. What this is going to do is every time our loop iterates, it's going to call this VI and it's going to ask for a single voltage reading from every analog channel that we have set up on the DAC. So in this case, I've got two analog channels set up here. So I've got channel 0 and channel 1. Um, I've created a constant and then set those there. And our data is going to come out here. And our data in this case is going to come out as a 1D array of scalars rather than a waveform variable this time. So a waveform, remember, has like a whole array of Y values, and then it has the DT value for the, how much time passes between each sample that was collected. In this case, we only have one sample, so we can't have a DT, right? We just have uh, one voltage reading that happens, and we're going to have to control the timing of how our data is acquired elsewhere in LabVIEW. Um, so let's go ahead and do that to start off with. So this, this sample mode is what we use when we don't need rapid data collection. So in the audio capture lab, we need to collect lots and lots of samples per second to be able to reproduce the audio signal in a way that we can actually hear it. So we were collecting samples at 50,000 hertz, so 50,000 samples per second. In this case, the temperature in the room is not going to change that quickly. We're probably fine with, you know, one or maybe 10 samples a second. Um, so we can have a much slower data acquisition and use less system resources um, and collect less data, which leads us to have smaller data files, which are generally easier to work with. So we've set up our, our DAC here. We want to set our timing of how long it's going to take for each sample to be acquired. So the way we can do that here is we right click in our block diagram. There's a timing palette. If we come in here, I recommend using this wait until next millisecond multiple. Notice there's also a wait, which is just like a straight delay of when LabVIEW hits that. It waits for a certain amount of time. You tend to get more consistent timing if you use wait until next millisecond multiple, um, because if the loop takes a little bit of time to execute, it'll wait until the next millisecond multiple, and you'll have execution on every millisecond multiple that we specify here. So I'm going to grab that VI. You can just drop this anywhere inside of your loop. It doesn't matter where it goes, just as long as it's inside of the loop. And we wire a constant to this. So I'm going to create a constant that tells you know, how long we want this loop to take, put, to take to run. So if I do 100, that's 100 milliseconds. And we'll get, uh, we should get 10 iterations per second. Or if I did 1,000, we're going to get one iteration per second. So let's do that. Start off there. And we'll get one data point every second from our thermistors. All right, with that, we're ready to go ahead and take our data and start working with it. So this is going to come out as a 1D array of scalars. So element, element 0, the first element in the array, will be from channel 0. And then element 1, which should be the second element in the array, will come from channel 1. So what we can do here is we can index that array so we get each data point individually. And then we can use that to do math. And we can process that and present the data however we need to. So let's go ahead and index the array so we can get those elements by themselves. So we'll get the index array block from the array palette. Drop that down. I'm going to wire the array into there. And there's our first element. So we need to stretch this to get the second element. And now we've got our two elements. So that'll be channel 0 and then channel 1 will be the second element coming out of that array. All right. So from here, you can go ahead and you can process your data in your um, thermistor assignment, you're asked to create a sub-VI that will take these voltages and then calculate the temperature. So you'll have a sub-VI where you'll take V in and V out of your 
a voltage divider circuit that contains the thermistor and it goes through the thermistor equations and the voltage divider equations and results in a temperature, right? That is then outputted into the loop. Um, for, so I'll let you guys figure out how to set that up, but let's go ahead and look at how we just manipulate this data and get it to go where we want to in our VI. So when I take this wire out, and we'll talk about why I'm doing this in just a second, I'm gonna draw and make just a tunnel here on the side of the loop so we can see the wire. You notice that the wire coming out of the DAC here where it's an array is thicker than the wire where it's coming out as a single element. That's LabVIEW letting you know that you have just a single element here instead of an array. It's a quick way to check what kind of data you have. And um, one of the things we want to be able to do with this is we want to be able to plot our data as it comes in. Now we could build up an array of our data points and send that to a waveform graph. Um, but to do that, we would need to put a shift register, and we'd have to have a build array block, and continuously add data points to our array, um, and then send that all over to a graph. One other thing we can do is we can use, instead of a waveform graph, we can use a waveform chart, right? So if I add a chart to our front panel, if I were to try and collect a waveform graph to this wire, we'd get a broken wire because we're sending a single data point um, over. But in this case, the chart will actually build up that array for us. So it, it ends up being a simpler solution to go ahead and use a chart in this situation. right? And I could do the same thing for our second channel. Let's say I want to graph both these channels separately. like so, and we'll be able to graph those data points. All right, now obviously in your situation, you're gonna have to have your sub VI so that you're not just graphing voltages, you're graphing the actual temperature. Um, that's part of the assignment, but I'll let you guys figure out how to do that one. And one of the other key things that you're asked to do in this assignment is to be able to save a data file. And that's where these tunnels here come in. So what we wanna have happen is after we hit the stop button, we take all the data that has been collected in the loop and we send it out to a data file um, where it gets written into a text file uh, and then we can open that up in MATLAB or Excel or something later on and process that data however we want to. So we can definitely write a data file. And the way you do that is go to your block diagram, right click, go to File I.O., that palette, and this Write Measurement File Express VI works really well. Right? So when you drop that down, it's going to bring up a menu. And it's going to give you some options. So one of the things here is you can select where that file is going to get saved. Right? Um, we can have it saved to one file. If the file already exists, it'll just rename the existing file. Right? It'll call it like backup one, and then it keeps using file names as it can go. You can also just have it use the next available file name. So it'll just add a number to the end of the file name and keep uh, counting up so you're not overwriting your, your files. Right? Um, the file format, usually text works really well. It's very robust. Um, you can open this file directly in Excel. It's really easy to import into MATLAB also. We generally encourage you to stay away from the, the Excel option just because it takes way longer. And sometimes when Excel gets updated, it can cause your older VIs to break um, because the, the interface between LabVIEW and Excel sometimes gets a little bit messed up. So it's a little safer to go with the text option. Um, that's what we recommend using. Binary is typically for if you need very high speed data acquisition, where you have to write data really quickly to a file. Um, that's not really something that we get into um, in this class, right? So, but if you're interested in that, definitely talk to Buddy, because he can give you some pointers on how to stream data to a, a disk really quickly. Um, other things that we can do here, we can usually take like no headers. It just makes for a cleaner uh, data file, and we can add in the, the headers manually later on if we want to. Right? You can also have an empty time column where we're not writing the time constantly here. If you had like a waveform data type that you were writing to the file, you could add a, a, a time column, and it would have the timestamp for when each data point was collected. But in our case, we just have an array anyways. 
So there's no timing information associated with, with that. It's, you'd have to have a waveform uh, data type for that to be included. All right, so let's go ahead and hit OK. And from here, what we can do is we, we want to make a big like 2D array of our data that gets sent to this write to measurement file VI, which will uh, then write that array to our text file. And then we'll, we'll have a bunch of columns and rows. And each column will be a different channel of data. And then the rows will be each of the data points for that. So that's what we want to have ultimately. But right now, what we have is we just have a single value coming out of this array. So we need to figure out how do we get all the data that we uh, have collected while this array was running, and how do we get all of that out as an array. So if you go to the tunnel and right click, there's this option called tunnel mode. And by default on a while loop, it's set to last value. So it's just whatever the last value was when the uh, while loop ran, you get that value and that value alone. But you can also set this to indexing. And you notice that the uh, tunnel looks a little bit different. It's got little brackets inside of it to let you know that it is now making an array. And we're going to get an array of all the values that we collected during that time. So we're going to do that with the second tunnel here, indexing. And now we have 1D arrays coming out of these tunnels. We're going to take those 1D arrays and we're going to put them together into a 2D array, which is what we'll send to the signals tab over here and write to our data file. So if I go array, build array, and stretch that, I'm going to get my two inputs. And I'll take the first array, put it in top here, second array, into the bottom. And I can take my, my appended array here, and I'll get this big double line right here. That's letting me know that I have a 2D array. And then we also have uh, this little block has popped up automatically. So this write to measurement file VI requires the dynamic data type as an input. And we need to convert the 2D array to the dynamic data. And LabVIEW is automatically selecting how it's going to do that. Um, it usually does a pretty good job of that. So just go ahead and leave that as is. But that is what that block that has popped up is doing. So that is the general outline of how your thermistor assignment is going to work. Now, there's obviously some options that you're requested to provide, which we've given you a separate video on how you can organize your graphs so that the user can select which graph is showing at any time. You'll need to make a sub VI that converts your voltages into final temperatures. Um, but this is the general skeleton of how you collect the data um, and get each data point individually so that you can work with it and then save all that data to a file. Um, so go ahead and give that a try. Set that up. Swing by the lab or office hours if you have any questions, and we'll be happy to help you out. Good luck on the assignment.